Come on, relax and just enjoy the show. We got you here on Straight Talk. Don't be lying, yes, you already know. We got you here on Straight Talk. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Straight Talk with your boy Ricardo Montgomery, aka the voice of Gospel Radio. Hanging out with you on this day the Lord has made, we'll rejoice in, be glad in it. I hope y'all had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hanging out with my guy in the studio today, y'all. This is a good friend of mine, man. He's been good with me through a lot, man. We've been we've been doing we've been doing that, a lot of stuff together, man. He's been a good friend. Every time I need to holler at him, he hits me up. Uh, good laughs, man, and everything. So I want y'all to welcome back to Straight Talk. For some of y'all here at Omaha, you maybe your first time hearing his voice. Pastor. Not only is he a pastor, but he's also an independent gospel artist. Welcome to the show, Pastor Jay Windsor. How you doing, my brother, man? Welcome back to Straight Talk. Man, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and uh, Happy New Year to you and the family, man. So great to be here with you. I appreciate you, brother. Hey man, there's, there's a lot going on, and uh, I know you and I have had our conversations. And uh, going into this year, uh, especially this week, the first week of uh, the new year, um, we got to talk about it, man. Cause it's just stuff that's happening, and we got to get better in this year in the Christian community. So I'm just glad to have you here. Um, and for some of y'all who don't know, he has a couple songs that has played on this show, uh, which is uh, "I Will Run," and. Uh, and, uh, which is a popular song that I like to play. That's one of my wife's favorite songs. So I had to play that. But Jay, man, so look. How, well, first thing first, how was your Christmas? How was you? How was your New Year? Man, Christmas was great, man. I uh, got a chance to spend some quality time with uh, wife and children and uh, my parents, and um, of course Thanksgiving kind of tied in. We spent some time with my wife's uh, family as well, but. Uh, Christmas was great, man. Looking forward to a, a wonderful 2024, man. How about yours? <clears throat> you know, it was a blessing, man. Um, you know, baby girl got what she wanted for Christmas. And, you know, me and the wife got the chance to just kind of hang out, relax a little bit for the new year. And uh, was- pray, man. Pray about what God is taking us, what he's leading us to. And looking forward to it. Um, because sometimes that we get a little bit... We see things that we have to say something. We say something about But then we have to understand, like publicly has to be different. I mean like during the during the week of Christmas and right before Christmas we, we, like Bishop Jakes had his issue uh, right. that everybody was clowning him about. Uh so you know t- times is hard for us out here man to be Christians like um, I know just going back to that real quick, he said uh Bishop Jakes was saying that he was being a spiritual advisor to Sean Combs. Right. And now it's like this whirlwind of just stuff is happening. Uh so it's like a fine line for, for us and how to do that. But let me ask you, man, how would how would you handle that situation? Like say like you know, like since you know me and I'm be a superstar so we need God's name, you know, and you gotta come by and holler at me, you know. <laughs> you know, well, man. Have a situation like that. Let's say, you know, I ain't gonna say I'll be like that, but I'm just saying if, if it was a situation like that, how would you handle that? Uh, first, I would be uh, wise uh, in reference to my surroundings, right? Um, yeah, I may be the spiritual advisor to uh, Sean Combs or another high-profile celebrity, but I also have to make sure that the integrity of my own uh, brand, my own family is being protected. And so um, if I was there, uh, number one, I would have had my wife with me without question. Uh, just to ensure that the boundaries were not going to get crossed. There would be no room for um, any assumptions of anything of that magnitude. And then on the back end, uh, if someone would have brought it up to say, hey, Pastor Jay, you know, allegedly you were at uh, this function and then you were invited by Diddy, I could immediately speak to him and say, yes, my wife and I were there. We were uh, in the city. He invited us to come through and my wife and I found time on our schedule for us to come through, celebrate and, and help them uh, celebrate that birthday or whatever occasion it was. We did uh, take a few photos with a few people that were there. We had a great time in the short period of time that we were there. Um, but that and that was the extent of it. Oftentimes, uh, I won't say often, sometimes 
when we're in places without our significant others or our spouses or even people who know us well enough to keep us out of harm's way, um, the, that gives the avenue for the enemy to infiltrate, to start on the little breadcrumbs and people start beginning to speculate, well, why is he here and how long is he going to be here and what's in that red cup and is he going to step with us and, you know, all of those different things begin to kind of unravel. So uh, my approach would have been uh, slightly different because, I, again, I would have had my wife there with me. There you go, wisdom. That's, that's, what, that's what it's all about. She had a little wisdom to it. Uh, I guess it, I guess when you do have your wife, what you think about to say that that you did anything else? Nope, exactly. <laughs> it's also trouble when you with your wife. <laughs> nope, <laughs> no. <laughs> but, but, you know, uh, I, I kind of look at it, I kind of look at it the same way, but in, in, in a little different. Because I always I, I look at it as you know, like a family member, like my uncle. Yeah, you know, when I was coming up, we we were. We were a little turned up. We was, we, we were doing a little bit much, you know, at the little, you know, house party. You know, once you think you start to get grown, you feel like, you know. <laughs> and then come through on the house party, you know, like, you know, it's not going to stop what you're about to do, but it's going to slow it down. So so I, I just feel like maybe Jake's was in the situation where he was like, all right, I'll stop through, whatever, whatever. And they were like, okay, we got the bishop here, so let's let's turn it down a little bit till he leave, then we can, we can go and fire this thing back up. And right. I, I just feel like maybe that was the situation with it. But it is um, it is one of those things to where people look at the Christian community and they put us on this pedestal uh, that's so high that it's just impossible to obtain, uh, and it makes it a little difficult. So we're gonna take another break because I, I got something I want to talk to you about. This comment, uh, there's two things going on there, things that I think that we should really truly address and have a real discussion about. And I know uh, you and I can have this discussion. Uh, and uh, it's coming up about, um, you know, secular artists becoming to Christian and then, you know, real issues going on in the world. So we're going to right. take a quick commercial break, come right back with Pastor Jay Windsor. Of the, he was the pastor of the Nazarene Baptist Church down in Georgia, way down there in the in Southern State. He's a little warmer than we are. So <laughs> we'll be right back with more straight talk right after this.
Get close to the words of the prophets. God is in there. Moses told his people to put scripture in little boxes and tie it to their heads. Strap the Bible to your forehead. Shout proverbs from the rooftops. Post parables on your mirror and on your wall. Pack your margins with notes. Sing the Psalms as your prayers. Read Paul out loud like poetry. Know Isaiah by heart. Love Matthew like a brother. Squeeze the verses like oranges. Do like the Lord told Ezekiel. Eat the scroll and fill your stomach with it. So I ate it and it tasted as sweet as honey. Don't just read the words of the prophets. Eat them. When I need help, I always meditate. And you know what I do? I ask God to help me. 
I called on God. I said, God, you are the chairman of the board. And I'm merely a rousing young executive. This is my only favorite station. Welcome back, welcome back to Straight Talk right here on AM660 and 106.7, the Heartlands Christian Voice. And I'm your host, you guys, Ricardo Montgomery, in the upper room on First Street. And in the studio with me is my man, the myth, the legend, my guy, Pastor Jay Windsor. Pastor Jay, how you like yes. that, man? I call it the upper room. We're on the second floor here. I like to call it the upper room. The, the upper room. Yeah. What, what, one day, hopefully, all of us will be able to get to the upper room. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I like to, I like to think my destiny is being the up. You better uh, believe it. Yes, sir. And I, and I know, you know, you, you probably won't have me in the background, but I can't introduce you. You know, so I, I probably won't be good in the background, but I can't introduce you, bro. <laughs> yeah, and listen, I'll I, I take the introduction any day, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't say it in the background. Let me change my song up, man. <laughs> it's, all right. it's all right. You can tell me that. You know we boys. It's, it's all right. Yes, sir. Yes. Listen, the, the Bible says to make that calling and election sure. That means to be certain about what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, my guy. Well, look, man. So we were talking about, we, we brought up Bishop Jakes and his stuff back in 2023. And right. now we're here in 2024. Um, there's still one thing that we, we really have to discuss, especially in the Christian community, is because we, we allow, I guess, things and personal issues over true, real issues that we should be really addressing. So um, I'm going to bring this up to you, man, because I, I just see that um, there was a report that was on the Christian Post uh, back in mid-December. That was saying that you know homelessness had hit, homelessness has hit a record high uh, in our communities back in 2023. Say, um, 20 out of every 1,000 people in the United States has experienced homelessness at least for a single night. Uh, and so, roughly around this country, we have over 600,000 people that has that are experiencing homelessness. Uh, from the beginning of January of 2023. So when we look at these numbers, look at this, and then we look at a situation like little, little Nas X, you know, the guy that had the Satan shit. Right. And now he wants to be a Christian artist. You know, um, his lifestyle, the things that he's been doing in the past few years, really goes against the Christian community. But now he wants to be a Christian artist. And we have folks that are trying to accept it, trying to uh, share the truth in love, I guess, is, is, is what, what I would try to use. Uh, um, Lecrae, let just bring his name out there. Lecrae is trying to like smooth and say like, hey, let's not be hypocritical. But how do we find the balance? I mean, because it's easy for us to look at Lil Nas X, talk about him, make him a headline on every show right now. Right. But then look at the thing like homelessness and just ignore it because we don't want to address it, which we should be addressing homelessness mm -hmm. because this is something that Jesus will be more in tune with than little right. Nas X. I agree. You know, one, one of the things that comes to mind is, <clears throat> you know, the scripture says that uh, when I was hungry, did you feed me? When I was naked, did you clothe me? And uh, 1 John even goes into discussing what pure religion is. In other words, what the mission and the focus of the church must be which is to take care of the orphans and the widows, to take care of the needy and the poor. And <clears throat> because um, homelessness cannot be sensationalized, it cannot be uh, advertised in such a way that it comes across as drama, then it kind of gets pushed to the wayside, unfortunately. Uh, and then the story with Little Nas X, because it can be sensationalized, because he's a uh, a, a well-known figurehead now uh, who is looking to cross over from the secular world, if you will, over into uh, gospel music or Christian music. Um, that was a is a larger storyline because society loves drama. We love things that have edge to it. We love things that have controversy to it. There's no controversy 
about the numbers of individuals who are homeless. There's no controversy of the thousands and countless of men, women, and children who go to bed hungry every single night or may not have a roof over their head. There is no sensationalism in that, but we can hitch our wagon to something that uh, the Lord has to deal with. The Lord has to deal with little Nas X. The Bible says, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. It's not my position, nor is it my plight uh, as a pastor, as a human being, as a believer in Christ, to judge that which the Lord can or cannot do in the individual. My responsibility is to be able to share the gospel of Jesus to Christ, allow the word of God to do the transformation and the changing the same way that the word of God changed my life to change Lil Nas X lives, Sean Combs life, anybody's life. Uh, and then once they begin to profess that their lives have been changed because of manifestation, the wonderful works of the Holy Spirit through Jesus the Christ in that person's lives, then the scripture that comes to mind is a tree is known by the fruit it bears. When you begin to profess your love and your devotion for God and you begin to share how much uh, you appreciate him and you love him and how much he's changed your life, we should see the fruit of that tree being changed. We should be able to see that without you sharing it with us. We should be able to see the fruit. However, if you say that your life has been changed, but your tree is still producing the same old fruit, I'm not judging you. I'm basing it on the produce of that particular tree that you said has changed. And so what we should do as a church, as a body of Christ, is really get back to uh, the main thing being the main thing which again is taking care of the homeless, the widows, the children. Those numbers are, are staggering and almost borderline heartbreaking to know that so many individuals in this great country, the United States of America, are homeless. And I know this, this next comment may rub a few people uh, the wrong way, but in 2023, we sent billions upon billions of dollars to other countries to aid them in their concerns and their issues but then we have a larger number of issues in our own backyard. And so uh, I make no apologies, but we need to take care of home first to make sure that those numbers come down, that homelessness rates comes down, that people have adequate housing, food, shelter, and a right to life and liberty in the United States before we just jump the gun and start sending things over abroad. And last, certainly but not least, Pray for little lives next, because only God is the one who can change the heart of man. Yes, everyone has opinions. We have thoughts. We have ideas. But at the end of the day, the Bible says every last one of us shall give an account for what we did and what we say. And so my prayer is that if Lil Nas X's desire is to align with the perfected will of God, that he's not playing with God because God is not playing with any of us. You know, we forget about, we forget about the importance of what you just said. Just don't play with God. You know, uh, Shirley Caesar had that song where, where, where the sister was playing in the backyard. And, uh, mm -hmm. and they said, Mama, she out here playing in church again. And like, she ain't playing this time. Right. They'll get a hold of you. And yes. Then, and we have to we have to remind ourselves, we, we forget this, but we're going to we have to speak up. We're going to have to speak up for the actions that we took on earth and how we uh, <coughs> didn't, um, didn't step up to the plate when he had us had certain things in line for us, you know. Right. Uh, so I'm glad that you, I'm glad you said all those things, man. This is, these, what you just said was highly important, um, especially, but let me ask you this, because this yeah. is where it gets weird. We're well, not weird, but this is where we seem to have an issue because as humans, this flesh wants to give us a God complex. So we can look at Lil Nas X. We can look at um a brother on the street, we can look at this person or that person and say, they're not doing the will of God and I need to tell them. I need to get them right. And <laughs> they're the ones that can say, like, why do we do that? Why why, why is that such a, a very important thing for us to want to just get somebody right without allowing, just using the word to get them right? Pride. Pride. You know, we, we some of us forget the struggles that we've endured and even the current struggles that we're enduring at that moment and instead of us dealing with the plank in our own eyes and dealing with the issues internally it's easy for us to project what someone else should be doing so because i don't want that spotlight on me i don't want anyone 
to see my shortcomings. I don't want to see, I don't want anyone to see where I may be uh, hurting or struggling in a particular area. And so if I can shift that spotlight to you and point out what you should be doing, what you should not be doing, uh, it takes the pressure off me uh, and it puts all the pressure on you because I'm quote unquote exposing uh, your, your issues, your problems. Uh, very similar to the woman at the well. These men uh, brought this woman to Jesus in hopes that Jesus was going to uh, side with them and help to expose her wrongdoing. And the scripture says that Jesus even told her, yeah, I know what you've been doing. I even know the person that you've been with and the ones that you're with now is not your own husband. However, here's what I want to take place. The person who doesn't have the issue, you can stand here and you can cast your opinions and your thoughts and uh, things towards her. However, um, if not, then you need to leave as well. And I'm paraphrasing that story. I think most of our listeners understand that. Jesus, in that moment, had the power, the authority to expose her and really, uh, for lack of a better term, break her to her core. But he used the love of God the Father, the grace and the mercy in which he came in to explain to her through love what you're doing is wrong. And I want you to leave this place and never do it again. And so it's a lesson to be learned there for all of us that, yes, you may see someone that's doing wrong, but it's not your place to come alongside them to point out they're wrong. It's your place to come alongside them and love them through that journey the same way that God has loved you through your journey so that you can celebrate with them and understand and sit back and say, if it had not been for the Lord on their side, this person's life would have never changed. Amen. You know, <laughs> excuse me. I, I feel like this is going to be an ongoing conversation because mm -hmm. it's not one where we're just going to get it. Right. We're not just going to up and get it. Um, we're still, it takes time. Just like it takes yeah. time for us to get out to say that we're in. It takes time for Christ to save us. It takes time for everything. It's going to take time for us as the Christian community to hold back on that and really allow God to do the individual um, works. But then right. things like homelessness is where we need to be focused on. I agree, man. Um, that, that this is. is where we need to be fighting. You know, yep, uh, that's, that's a bigger it, that's a bigger problem uh, than someone leaving secular music to come to to sing Christian music. That that's that's minor in comparison to the the homeless rates here in, in the uh, United States. Exactly, and and other issues that are being attacked uh, via the Christian community. I mean, in other parts of the world, uh, I know in Canada, we reported last year. That you know they were they were having legislation that they didn't go to Christmas and Easter, uh, said they were discriminated. Um, you know school school bus. I mean a superintendent in Pennsylvania told the bus drivers, you can't bring up any Christmas decorations or anything religious during the Christmas season. These are the things that we have to fight and fight because this is where the fight is. Because if we keep it up, just like in uh, in the Bible, we're going to have a generation that's not going to know who God is, and that's going to be a big problem right you know it's funny you brought that up i asked our congregation well uh, i posed a question to them in 2023 uh, uh, is it really important as to the date when jesus was born or is it more important to know that he was and see i think we kind of get caught up into the commercialism of these different holidays and people say oh it's pagan and all these different things the mere fact jesus the christ was born there's nothing pagan about that Unless you're an atheist and you don't believe, then then yeah, yes, right? Uh, he got up from the grave. That is not pagan. That's a fact. Unless, again, you don't believe. We can get caught up in the, in the weeds of the dates and the time frame and the seasons in which it took place. That's minor. What we need to celebrate is the mere fact that Jesus the Christ was born, that he did come to save us, and that the Bible declares that God so loved the world that he gave us his only son, and then further along in the story, after three and a half years of a successful ministry, the Bible says that he was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of his peace was upon his shoulders. They killed him in flesh, not in spirit. They killed him in flesh. 
He then was taken and bought, put into a borrowed tomb. The Bible says, then there was a transformation, a shaking that took place, and he got up with all power in his hand. Those two things, him being born and him dying, are facts. There's nothing pagan about that. There's no reason to argue well over the dates because that's pointless. I'm celebrating the fact that Jesus the Christ was born and that I'm going to also celebrate the fact that he has risen with all power in his hands. Amen, my brother. Amen, because you couldn't put it no better. Can't place it no better. We, we, we find ourselves getting um, lost in, in those things and yep. not, not realizing the truth that's out there. But that's triggered in me. Get you to yes. look at this over here. Don't look at this over here. Yeah. Uh, we're sitting there talking with pastor of Nazarene Baptist Church, uh, Pastor Jay Windsor, right here on Straight Talk. We're going to take another quick commercial break, come back. We're going to talk to him a little bit about his music, man. This, this guy got a lot of good music out there. And see what's coming up for him in 2024. We'll be right back with more Straight Talk right after this. Get close to the words of the prophets. God is in there. Moses told his people to put scripture in little boxes and tie it to their heads. Strap the Bible to your forehead. Shout proverbs from the rooftops. Post parables on your mirror and on your wall. Pack your margins with notes. Sing the Psalms as your prayers. Read Paul out loud like poetry. Know Isaiah by heart. Love Matthew like a brother. Squeeze the verses like oranges. Do like the Lord told Ezekiel. Eat the scroll and fill your stomach with it. So I ate it and it tasted as sweet as honey. Don't just read the words of the prophets. Eat them. Welcome back, welcome back to Straight Talk right here on AM 660 and 106.7, the Heartlands Christian Voice. The Heartlands Christian Voice. And it's that time today where on Fridays, y'all know what goes on. It's been going on all year. Now mm -hmm. it's... Now it's the new year. Now it's the new year. Yeah, it's 2024. And so happy new year, Ricardo. Happy new year, Tom. How you doing, man? I'm great. Did you ring in the new year pretty good? Yeah, it was... It wasn't crazy all partied up it was just and you know, my parents had some friends over and i hung out with them and then uh, it, that was about it yeah, it was happy new year and it was like all right it's time to go to bed yep get the day off tomorrow yeah yeah pretty much yeah basically what well, is football time tom it's football time all right so we're getting ready to go into these playoffs and um um i have to apologize to you because i was highly motivated on christmas day that my 49ers would beat the Baltimore Ravens. and They didn't. They didn't come anywhere near close to beating no. them. Yeah. But, but thanks to the Arizona Cardinals mm -hmm. and the Washington Commanders, mm -hmm. my 49ers are the number one seed in the NFC. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, the Ravens are the number one seed in the AFC. Niners are the number one seed in the NFC. Let's talk some football, man. We got playoff football coming up. Uh, NFL college football is out. I was wrong again. Mm -hmm. I thought Texas and Alabama would play for the national championship, but oh for two. You didn't have to say it like that. Like, you know, you could have eased. You know, it, it's, some, it's a fact. You were zero for two. Yeah, yeah no. Texas and Alabama both lost. Yeah, but you didn't have to say it like that. You could have just said it. Like, I mean, if it makes you feel better, I went one and one. I mean, I expected. How is your win going to make me feel better? <laughs> <laughs> I expected Michigan to play Texas. <laughs> <laughs> makes you feel better. I, I, I lost one, and you lost two. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and uh, yeah, I thought the committee got it wrong, but they actually got it right. You thought the committee got it right. I told you. Yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, Georgia yeah. just demolished Florida State. Let's not, let's not bring that up. You know I'm a Florida State guy. Demolish just have to be the word you have to use there. What other word am I supposed to use? It was 63 to 3. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't pretty. 
<laughs> All right, Tom. What else we got, man? Tell me what's going on with sports, man. Oh, yeah, the college football is uh, wrapping up. Of course, you got the national title game on Monday between Michigan and Washington. I like the Huskies in this matchup. I really like Michael Penix Jr. I think he has been just phenomenal all season long. He was definitely good against Texas. And uh, that good against that good of a defense uh, in Texas that Texas has, yeah, that's that's something special. And Michigan maybe has an even better defense than Texas, but that was still a very impressive performance. And I don't think Michigan has seen a quarterback like Penix. I don't think they have. And so, so yeah, it'll be a very fun uh, title game in Houston on Monday. As far as the NFL goes, yeah, the playoffs are starting to take shape. Like we mentioned, Ravens are the number one in the AFC. Niners, number one in the NFC. Uh, very few teams have locked up the playoff, like their seeds. Mm-hmm. So I think the Chiefs are the three seed that they've locked that up in the AFC. Um, I don't know a ton much else. There are teams that have locked up bids. They don't know what seed they are, like the Browns or the Dolphins in the uh, yeah. in, in the AFC. Yeah. Um, I think uh, Dolphins and Bills is a big game mm-hmm. this this Sunday. Yep. Um, and um, you know, for the lower seeds, uh, Green Bay could get in, mm-hmm. Seattle could get in, or, or New Orleans can get in. So mm-hmm. it's not too many on the NFC side. But uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing hopefully Houston can get in with C.J. Stroud, the rookie, yes. rookie quarterback into the playoffs, man. That'd be that'd be great. That would be phenomenal. And if, if Houston makes a run, I'll be rooting for them. Because with the Rangers winning the World Series this past fall, they are now the only major professional sports franchise in Texas that has not won the granddaddy of all prizes. I mean, the Rangers and Astros won the World Series back-to-back years. The Mavericks have won an NBA championship. The Spurs have five NBA championships. The Rockets have two NBA championships. The Stars have won a Stanley Cup. We all know how many Super Bowls the Cowboys have. The Texans have yet to win a single Super Bowl. They haven't even made it to a conference championship game first. I guess it starts there. I guess so. And I think uh, they were close in... 2020, I want to say they think they were in the divisional round. They lost to the Chiefs. And yeah, when it, it was up like 28 nothing. Yeah, yeah that was. but uh, speaking of the Chiefs, uh, they are yeah, like we like I mentioned, they are the three seed of the AFC. They have one more regular season game in LA against the Chargers on Sunday, so that game is pretty meaningless for them. We'll see if if Coach Andy Reid plays normal or if they just decide to let Mahomes and, and the rest of the crew rest and just uh, take an L for this, for that game. We'll see what happens, but yeah, it'll be an, it'll be a, a very interesting playoff as always. It's a, it's going to be a good playoff series. Um, will Dallas be able to hold up? Uh, will, what will happen with Philly? Um, mm-hmm. You know, can Miami take over the two C can Buffalo get in? Mm-hmm. Like it's it's a lot of different scenarios in in uh, the NFC South. I mean, AFC South is really good. Mm-hmm. I don't want to dive into too much there. I don't want to lose nobody there. But it's it's a good football weekend. There's a lot of storylines, a lot of different things going on. As uh, one sports commentator said, which I really agree with, um, it's all about the stories. Yes, it is, which makes it more interesting. Uh huh. And so this weekend is a really good weekend for certain stories. Yep. Uh, some teams can play spoilers. Mm-hmm. Uh, to knock off some rivals. I think the Bears and uh, Green Bay is playing this Sunday. Mm-hmm. So if the Bears win, they could knock off their rival. Yeah. And, you know, some teams get hot. They, they want to play to knock them off. Uh, last year, Detroit knocked out Green Bay. Yes, so that they did. was that was that was great. Uh, so it's a lot of different stories out there. Um, and uh, man, football season is wrapping up. I guess we need to get ready to start discussing some basketball stuff. Yes. Right? Yeah. Basketball has been going on for a couple months now. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, college basketball, little NBA though. Uh, I'm college basketball is more my thing. It's my specialty. I've been a very big Creighton fan for almost two decades since I was so a kid. So is it college basketball or is it just Creighton? Um, maybe a little more for Creighton and really the Big East in general. But uh, I do follow at least a little bit of 
all of college basketball here okay, and good. there. As long as you mention Villanova, we all right. If you don't mention Villanova, well, Creighton and Villanova are both in the Big East. So. I know. I'm just saying. That's why. That's why I'm bringing this up because mm-hmm. I want to make sure when we do our reports, I don't hear no Villanova. Yeah. I'm, I'm about to pray for you to get some Villanova up in there. Nova plays tonight, or they play. They play uh, Xavier Wednesday, and they'll play. Uh, oh, I forget who they play on Saturday, but sorry, right. who's all about football right now? Yeah. Tom, man, happy new year again to you, man. And uh, we're gonna wrap this segment on up. I hope y'all enjoyed it. A lot of fun, man. Me and Tom just we're we're just we're, we're finding our chemistry. So yes, having a lot of fun here on Straight Talk. Mm-hmm. We'll be right back with more to wrap the show up right after this. What's good, fam? It's Jonathan Trailer, and you're tuned in to Straight Talk with Ricardo Montgomery. Welcome back. Welcome back to Straight Talk right here on AM660 at 106.7. The Heartlands Christian Voice got something all new for you. So if you're checking everything out, you've listened to the radio right now, but you can go to the Facebook page and see what's going on in the studio right now with me and Pastor Jay Wednesday. Just sitting there hanging out, man, and uh, having a good time here at uh, Straight Talk today. Uh, discussing a lot, man, but there's a lot to discuss. And, and the main point is, is what are we focused on? We have, to, we have to truly focus on the things of Christ not the things of human nature and sometimes it's hard to find that balance it's hard to find that balance uh when it comes to the things of human nature Mm -hmm. and uh but that's what god does god he helps us out he helps out gives us things and helps us out mainly the bible so if we read that bad boy we'll be fine (laughs) absolutely uh, hanging with me today is my man pastor jay windsor of uh the pastor at uh, nazarene baptist church down in uh you, you in um columbus georgia right right the church is in in columbus georgia uh but of course my family and i reside in atlanta two hours north of uh columbus georgia <clears throat> that's all right that's all right i mean i, I just know i had a buddy that's from up here so he has a family in columbus georgia He's yes sir to see. i said well, if you're looking for a church go stop by my boy Pastor Jay. please do i'll give, we'll you, love I'll give you the address and everything i'll let you know go see him i'll let him know you're coming so that you won't you you have a friend so he'll take yes. care of you yes sir we will um, um so we talked earlier when i introduced you that you're an independent artist um man you, you got great music out there like i said we play here on the show so what's next for you man are you, are you working on the album right now what's going what's coming up next for you? yeah man um we're, we're making some um some intentional moves this year in 2024 um we took uh about a good year and a half, two years off from music because we were transitioning into the office of pastoring. And so I wanted to ensure that I gave uh, myself enough time to to <clears throat> get settled there. And um, 2024, new music is coming. Uh, can't give you any titles of any music right now, but new music is coming the first quarter of this year, 2024. We're also uh, back on the road uh, starting in March. Uh, yes, I am a pastor. And I love singing and, and, and praising God, um, but I've also been tapped to be a part of the Motown Review Experience, uh, which is a tour, uh, which I'm a part of through uh, gospel great Denise Tishner Davis. Uh, shout out to Rev Nation artists um, and Rev Nation as a whole, but I'm a part of that. Then I've also been uh, casted for a stage play uh, that was going to debut in 2024 called The Book. And so please make sure that you're uh, watching and looking out for the dates for the Motown review as well as uh, the book. But new music is coming from yours truly, Pastor Jay Windsor. We're also uh, launching From the Heart Tour. Uh, we have one city already locked in, which is Bellevue, Illinois, which will take place, uh, I believe it is October, excuse me, November of this new year 2024 and from the heart tour really kind of circles back a little bit about what we were talking about with homelessness uh the difference is we're going into different cities doing a concert and we're going to raise funds to bless a uh organization that's attached to foster care and adoption Uh, for those of you who don't know my story i am an adoptee And so homelessness as well as adoption have always been near and dear to my heart. So my team and I uh, began working on this in 2023 and we're ready to execute it at full force in in this wonderful year of 2024 from the heart tour. 
Um, and so we're looking to be able to come to your city to be a blessing, uh, not just in music and deeds, but also financially. We want to be able to bless those houses of worship as well as those organizations who are geared towards uh, adoption as well as foster care. So 2024 for me is the year of execution. We did a lot of talking and a lot of planning in 2023. 2024 is the year of execution. We're not asking any more questions. Now we're going to start doing. Solution. We have a question, we found the solution, now it's time to act on the solution. That's it. That's it right there. I love it, man. Anything we can do up here, man, to help, man, please let me know, man. I reach out to some church folks and some churches that's uh, connected with the show and see what we can do, man, to get you guys up here and let's, let's make it happen, man. Man, let's, let's do that. I'm so serious. I would love, you know, it's been a minute since we've been talking about me coming to that area. So uh, this year we need to make that happen because, again, uh, homelessness, adoption, foster care, those are those are the important issues. right? I'm not minimizing the other stuff that's going on. But, man, we got a lot of hurting people out there. And it's our responsibilities as the ambassadors of Christ to address those needs, not just to pray about it, but to also be in the middle of it. And being a catalyst to ensuring that those issues are being eradicated. We can't solve all the problems, but we shouldn't just stand on the sideline waiting for somebody else to do it when God has blessed our hands to be a blessing to others. Amen. I agree with that, my friend. Uh, that's 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 big because we have we have the issue here of homelessness. We also have, you know, um, you know, uh, a place called foster love where people who are, you know adopting or taking in foster kids can come in and uh, you know get them clothing and things like that to kind of save her, help on the, the wallet because you know everything right. is, everything everything costs but these kids doesn't they don't they didn't ask for what's coming what they get you know and you know and didn't have the heart to go help these children right. you know we gotta have, we gotta do more we got to do more it should be such a hard time for people who want to help um you know kids who are just or in bad situations and just getting out of it, um, right? Be that difficult. Uh, man, I appreciate that, but I love the fact I also love the fact that you got new music coming out too because you know, ain't nothing it's, like a Jay of jam, man. You know, it's been a minute, man. It, it's, it's, it's kind of a, it's gonna be kind of difficult to come off the heels of uh, I will run and he that dwells, but I know the Lord got some stuff cooking, so we're gonna we just gonna continue to trust his process. Well, you know. I will run is, is is a good worship song and he that dwells man that but that don't get your body moving and get you feeling pretty good. I, I don't know what else will you know. Uh, but man, look man, God bless you man. I appreciate you coming in and sharing, sharing with us on uh on the times that we're talking about. You know, just just the focus man. We have to, you know, it's twenty twenty four. It's time to focus man and, and pay attention to what God is doing. Um, yes, I think 2023 gave us was opening up visions and connecting dots, and now as those dots get connected, it's time to move, it's time to push yeah. forward, man, and push forward on real issues, not just this play play stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna still talk about it because I know it's gonna be people out there need some get trying to help help you get focused. Leave the individual stuff alone. Let God deal with that. I mean, the name of Jesus right. can handle that, but. This the bigger picture. We need to start focusing on that and really diving in and, and fixing those issues. And it's not going to take one of us. It's going to take all of us. Now, yes, it has to be a collective issue, a collective measure, not just a bunch of individuals, but people working together. Doesn't even matter about anything about the color of your skin. Those things are minute. <clears throat> Helping people has nothing to do with the color of skin. It has everything to do with the the nature and the of your heart. That's right. Jesus didn't come here worrying about what, what skin color we were. You just want you just want to get a say. That's it's it. All about saving our souls, and if, if we're out here saving souls, it don't matter what you look like. This is <laughs> no, <safe. laughs> no, because your soul don't have a. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, I like the joke. say, "Ain't no, ain't no Baptist heaven. Ain't no, ain't no, uh, ain't no Catholic heaven. It's, it's all called heaven." <laughs> That's it. That's it. That That's is. It. It. Well, my friend, man, we appreciate you, man. Any last words for us? Man, again, uh, just uh, again, Happy New Year to all the new listeners, man, and, and those who have been following Straight Talk. If you have not, make sure you follow Straight Talk uh, at Straight Talk underscore RM. Make sure you follow this good brother. Great quality of, of content that's being shared. Uh, you can also follow us on social media at I am Jay Windsor. Uh, I am the letter J W I N D S O R. You can also check us out on our website, which is www 
www.imjwindsor.com. Again, Happy New Year. This is going to be a great 2024. God bless you, brother, and I appreciate you, and I love you for life, man. Same here, bro. And we'll be right back with more Straight Talk on tomorrow's show. So y'all stay right here. Tuned in right here. 4 o'clock, 4 to 5. We got it going on every day. And get a glimpse of what's going on in the studio. Y'all get to see what Jake Wednesday look like. He's clean, ain't he? Yeah, this, dude right here, man. this dude is clean, man. You know, I, I can't be him, man. I, every time I try to figure out what I'm dressed better than him, I, I seem to be down a grade. But I, I'm going to no. catch up with you one day, man. <laughs> love you, bro. Love you too, man. Hey, y'all, we'll see y'all tomorrow, man. Y'all be blessed. Hey. Come on, relax and just enjoy the show. We got you here on Straight Talk. Don't be lying, yes, you already know. We got you here on Straight Talk, yeah. We got you grooving. Let us know how you do it. We keep it live right here on Straight Talk. Record on my phone.